During this presentation, I will touch upon the new and improved functionalities that are delivered with Uniface 9.5. Uniface 9.5 was released November 2011 and is now generally available for all our customers and as a free download with a temporary license for three months. The main themes for Uniface 9.5 are GUI enhancements, mainly for the grid widget and multiple occurrences. For web services, we are now capable to support complex data types, and we can easily adapt for complex standards and security issues. We made, for example, the SOAP header accessible for editing. And last but not least, we improved performance and session management for rich internet applications. A JavaScript API makes it now possible to reduce the number of round trips between the browser and the web server. Many customers are still running in a client-server environment and there was a huge demand for improvement of the grid widget. We made the grid widget more dynamic. You can set the column width now using PROC instructions. We also enabled the option to hide or display columns. This makes it possible to use one and the same form for different users and display columns depending on the permissions of the user locked on. The extended triggers viewport underscore resized and column underscore resized are fired when a column is resized and can be used to implement functionality related to column resizing. The hover view property lets you display the value of a field as a tooltip by hovering over the field. This can be used also for the grid widget. And with dollar cur end properties and dollar end properties you can get or set the entity properties, for example highlight an occurrence of an entity or a down entity that has focus. This is just a short demonstration slide that shows how column can be hidden and how the hover over function works. When you for example log on to an application as an administrator, all columns of the application are shown. However, if you log on to the same application as an end user, only a selected number of columns are shown. The code that is used to implement this functionality is dollar column syntax. Another big theme for Univis 9.5 that got a lot of attention from the Univis lab was the extension of dealing with web services. Although web services started as a rather not too complicated paradigm, the way the standards are defined nowadays are numerous and can be very complex. Almost every industry uses its own standard for messaging and security. The way the lab has approached this challenge was mainly to open up as much as possible information that comes with web services and make it accessible for the software engineer. Complex data types for example, structures inside structures of more than two levels can now be understood and processed using the new data type struct. Besides that, we can now define callback operations and error handling to process SOAP errors within the context of Uniface. For that Uniface services can be developed with predefined operations. There are basically two ways to deal with web services. First you can open up for the world by enabling a call-in. For a web services call-in the SOAP call-in underscore pre and the SOAP call-in underscore post operation can be defined on the Univis service to catch the SOAP request just before and just after processing. Call to the world and enable a call-out to an external web service. A similar construction has been created for a call-out 
with the soap underscore callout underscore pre and the soap underscore callout underscore post operation. These operations can, for example, be used to process the SOAP header content in case of security issues. Encrypting and decrypting of SOAP header keys can be done using these pre- and post-request operations. To make these services accessible, they can be referred to in the SOAP driver settings of the assignment file using a callback parameter. For example, callback equals SOAP underscore callback. Tells the system to use a Univis service SOAP underscore callback to process post and pre-request for SOAP. If this setting is omitted, the callback service will not be accessed by a SOAP call. Ensure, by the way, also that you modify your proxy settings in your assignment file to get access to the Internet. To process complex data structures, a new data type struct has been developed. Struct is a data type that can easily be modified and converted to and from XML and to and from component data. The overall procedure is to first convert incoming data, source data on the slide, to a struct data type. Then you modify the struct so Uniface can understand it, or in such a way that the outside world understands it. For example, an XML comes in, convert the XML to a struct data type, modify the struct data type and then convert the modified struct data type to a component data. Component data can be updated on the Uniface component. The next step is convert the component data back into a struct data type and convert the struct data type into XML. Complex data types can be processed using the struct data type. This can be done for the SOAP header to, for example, encryption. Standardization could be implemented in callback operations. A little bit more about struct. The struct data type is kept in memory and exists only in the context of one Uniface component. You cannot send a variable of a struct data type to an operation of another component. Because it is kept in memory, there is no limit to the size other than the system limits. As the word says, it is all about structure and the modification of this structure. The members of the struct and the nodes can be accessed using a technique that is very well be compared with the way handles work. Special PROC has been developed to use these handles to modify and convert struct to other data types. All the PROC related to struct is very well documented in the Uniface library. Nowadays customers are more and more moving to the web. So let's talk a little bit about RIA. The web offers so much more options nowadays. With rich internet applications, the web offers as much or more functionality as a classic client-server application. With this movement towards the web, however, there are some bumps on the road. To mention some challenges. Performance. Security. The stateless paradigm, the integration with other applications, just to mention some. A performance gain can be reached by executing code on the client side without the need for a round trip to the server. 
incremental search can now easily be developed using a new extended trigger on edit, executed on the client. And session management has been improved by extending functionality with the dollar web info proc function. As already mentioned before in the previous slide, performance is very much influenced by the number of round trips needed between the browser client and the web server. So by minimizing these round trips, performance can be improved. Already some proc, defined for example developed in the detail trigger, will be executed on the client rather than on the browser. Nowadays, with Uniphase 9.5, developers can define web triggers and web operations to be executed on the browser. Web triggers and web operations are implemented as JavaScript and can be developed in extended triggers or detail trigger and of course in the operation trigger. For these triggers a public web statement is not allowed. This is a small example of the code that can be used for these web trigger operations. The code JavaScript inside the proc editor you need the JavaScript and end JavaScript proc. Commands to tell the compiler that JavaScript has been coded. The compiler however does not execute a syntax check on the coded JavaScript itself. Because Uniface now supports JavaScript coding, many more options are now available building Uniface rich internet applications. But there is more. A JavaScript API is now available to manipulate Uniface objects using JavaScript. This is the list of Uniface objects that has been defined to be accessed by JavaScript. All basic Uniface objects can be accessed starting with Uniface to get access to DSP instance to an individual Uniface defined field. In the Uniface library you will find a list of available functions for each object letting you manipulate Uniface with JavaScript. This slide shows the hierarchy of the JavaScript objects. It is an example the way JavaScript can be used inside a Uniface dynamic server page. In this example it is a check on the content of a card and the color is set to red for a predefined quantity. Please remember that all this can also be coded using Uniface proc, however that may have a negative impact on the performance of the application during deployment in the browser. The unedit extended trigger fires immediately upon a field change caused by user interaction. Such an entering of a character, cutting or pasting text or undo or redo of character entry. Let's now elaborate a little bit on session management for rich internet applications. Web applications are per definition stateless. As a consequence, the client browser does not know about the server process and the other way around. To manage communication between the client and to the server, session management must be applied. The moment a session is initiated, it can be managed, assuming that the state information about the session is available on both server and client and can be matched. This way the context of the application will be known by both server and client. 
once this state information is maintained for more than one or more than one HTTP requests, please see the picture, the client application and the server process will run in a known context. The session management API provides an interface to the web request dispatcher, enabling you to instruct it to start a session, close a session, or start a new session with all session context, all session state and attributes. The session management API provides an interface to the web request dispatcher as mentioned before and it enables you to change and control the HTTP session. You can invalidate the current session or create a new session with or without the same state information and session attributes. So for example, there is a dollar web info request context. You can set it uh, to username equals John, role equals admin. This sets a context for the web session. You use the get item proc command to get information about a specific attribute of the context. Session commands can be passed using the dollar web info session commands statement. Use the API to invalidate the current session and request a new session, optionally setting or deleting session attributes when doing so. This should only be required at critical points in the web application transaction, for example after login or log off, or before committing sensitive data. You can use the set attributes command to associate additional information with the session. For example, to be referenced by another component. The WRD Activate checks whether there is an ID of a session invalidated by the renew action and, if so, add the invalid session property to $WebInfo server context with the value of this invalidated session ID. It also sends a request to the Unifase server to activate a targeted DSP operation. In the library you can find examples. During this presentation I touched upon functionalities of Uniface 9.5, client server, we modified grid multiple occurrences functionalities. We made web services now more um, to be to enable we enabled web services to process more complex data types. Rich internet applications can be developed with more flexibility and a better performance with Univis 9.5. Please follow us on Uniface.info to find more updated information on Uniface 9.5.